Welcome back to ESPR Boxing's YouTube channel. Delighted as always to be joined by Elliot Grigg. This is a video about who could Anthony Joshua face in less than a week's time on August the 12th, now that Dillian White um, has had to pull out of the fight due to failing a drugs test. Elliot, thank you for your time. Um, looking forward to doing this with you. It's kind of not a video we were expecting to make. It's a bit of an ad hoc video. Obviously, we've had a day of... Um, We've had everyone from Otto Wallen to Michael Hunter to Andy Ruiz putting their names in that, offering to fight Anthony Joshua in a few days' time. Um, we're expecting um some we're expecting it to be solved in the next 48 hours in terms of will the event go ahead and if it does go ahead, who the opponent will be. Um, but yeah, your thoughts on on August the twelfth, now that we um we kind of we're on the lookout for a new opponent for Joshua. My thoughts are that the event will go ahead, frankly. Um, the reason for that being almost outside of boxing, almost to do with like, talked a bit about it off air, you've never worked with me really, I suppose, but also to do with kind of like Joshua's design deal, I think kind of like in meeting those requirements. Uh, the fact that it is a large event, the fact that it was supposed to be on pay-per-view, the fact that it's sold out the O2, I almost feel like you don't want to necessarily let that pass, but I almost feel like those questions that are lingering, will it remain on pay-per-view, et cetera? Um, will also influence the opponent, frankly, because, you know, some of those names you've mentioned, I've also seen people mention Hergovic, I've seen people mention McKean. You can't, I said this to you again, I don't think for a pay-per-view fight, you can headline it with Joshua versus McKean, no matter how, how much you sell it as an undefeated guy, you know, Ashes, Cricket, England, Australia, whatever, you can't you can't sell that guy as a pay-per-view headliner. So to be honest with you, it depends really on, on, on that, I think, for the level of opposition. But equally... That Joshua, like we said previously, there's a lot of money running on Joshua in that Saudi event or that fight against Wilder. Everyone wants to see that, even though it's probably not the fight it was several years ago. It'd still be good to see Wilder beat Joshua. And I feel like if you put him in, they're not going to want to put him with anyone risky to jeopardize that either. Yeah. So it's almost going to be someone that's kind of respectable, but isn't that much of a threat, like what Dillian White was. So it's like a like for like replacement, really. The names you mentioned, I mean, we'll get onto these as well, but. Do I see any of those names like Ruiz? Well, Ruiz shouldn't be a threat, but of course, like we've seen AJ struggle with Ruiz before. Hunter, not necessarily a bad one, but you know, I've seen names like Chisora being banded around. And yeah, I don't know, man. Like, what do you, yeah, what, uh, let's, let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk about it further. Yeah, we'll, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm just going to throw a few names at you that kind of look like they could be a possibility. You never know. It could be a complete kind of, it could be a complete wild card. Um, there are three heavyweight fights happening on the Gunder card there. Obviously, those six fighters have all, you know, had a training camp and um will sh will be in will be in shape to fight next next weekend, you'd hope. So it look, people are uh talking about those guys as bit as being as being a possibility. Um first thing I'm gonna give to you, um Philip Hergovic, undefeated heavyweight, been world ranked for a long time now. Um had a not a great performance against Yu Lei Zhang um a few months ago. That was well, it was almost a year ago actually. Um, on the Usyk Joshua two rematch undercard. Um, your thoughts on whether this is a poss whether this is a genuine possibility this could happen, and what would happen if that if that if that fight did get made? Is it a possibility? Um, I suppose it is a possibility. Do I think it's likely out of the names? I don't solely for the fact that A, I think it's relatively risky for Joshua. I actually think Joshua would win, but I think it's a tougher opponent than than Dillian White. Also the fact that um I believe Hagovic is is U6 IBF, IBF mandatory um as well. So would he want to necessarily risk that by fighting Joshua? Again, like the money that's on Wilder Joshua in Saudi, like and the fact that it's in London. You're almost saying, right, he's gonna to have to knock him out or at least convincingly win nine or ten rounds, I think, personally, to get that to get that nod. So if he's confident that we've seen him obviously a decent KO percentage, obviously was it 12 and 15 or something, but struggle with Zhang. So it's like he's got the potential, but I just I'd be surprised. And I think to be honest, it would boil down to money. If someone just goes, here's a large, large, large mm. bucket of money for you to fight anti Joshua, yeah, he might take it. Well then he said damage his career necessarily if he lost to Joshua, if it was a close fight. Actually, in some ways, probably elevating towards the top end of that decision because his career has obviously stalled a little bit. Performance against Zhang wasn't convincing, but I think it would actually have to come down to money. I don't necessarily see that working, although it would be a good replacement for boxing fans. But again, casual fans on the pay per view market, 
I don't know how many of them know who Philip Hergovic is, frankly. No. Um, we'll move swiftly on to the next name, the guy who Philip Hergovic is supposed to be fighting on Saturday night, Dempsey McKean, um, from Australia, 32 years old, 22 and 0 with 14 knockouts. Um, I think it's fair to say not a not a massive name in the heavyweight division. If you look at his resume, he's obviously, you know, got a good record, but he doesn't have kind of a noticeable name on that record the way that the way that Hergovic does. Um yeah, thoughts on this being a possibility for Joshua's opponent, opponent Elliot? I mean, it makes sense, but as from a sort of perspective of don't let Joshua get hurt, let him get into the world and hopefully let him do something destructive. Like, because essentially this this McKean to me was obviously an opponent that was trying to essentially fulfil that role for Hergovic, turn up, get convincingly beaten, get the train rolling for Hergovic. So essentially, I think that could fill in for Joshua. But again, I just think... I mean, to be honest with you, until a couple of weeks ago, I hadn't really heard of McKean either. And then I follow boxing quite closely. So again, if you try and sell Joshua versus McKean anywhere, anywhere to anyone, it's going to be basically, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a very, very tough sell. And I think you'd obviously, you're then losing the pay-per-view for my, I mean, yeah, you can't really, I don't think sell that as a pay-per-view. Um, so I'd be very surprised if that happened. But again, like what you're saying, 14 Ks and 22. Don't think he's ever had a, never had a 12 round fight. So to be honest with you, I think it mostly sort of eight rounders, I believe. So yeah, it'd be a massive step up for him. Still six six, still could probably trouble Joshua. Still quite big, but yeah, I just think I'd be surprised to be honest with you, even though that would actually be a good standing. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if that see if that happens. Look, he can't really rule out anything at the moment, which kind of leads me on to the next name. Um, another heavyweight fight happening on the undercard. His Derek Chisora against Gerald Washington. Fight only announced a few days ago. Um, both fighters kind of at the end of their careers, you would think. Um, Gerald Washington's actually even older than Derek Chisora, been <laughs> been around for longer. Um, Derek Chisora, you know, needs no introduction, been in British boxing for a long time. Um, I think one thing about Chisora is that he's always just been quite close with Joshua, um, both from the same amateur club in Finchley, North London. Um, you know, Chisora was ringside in Saudi Arabia when Joshua fought Usyk in the rematch. I feel like Joshua's kind of just supported him, has kind of done commentary for Chisora's fights in the past. I think he was doing commentary for the the second Dillian White fight, ironically. But um, is this a possibility, Elliot? Like, I'm not going to ask you if you want to see it, but um, <laughs> is this, do you think this could this could happen? Could Chisora be in the main event next week? You know, I I said this evening on WhatsApp. I reckon she's already been in Eddie Hearn's DMs maybe within five minutes. As soon as that happened, it'd have been the, the, the what is it? The Balaclava would have been on, Base Mask would have been on, Nigel Farage had been going on Twitter, the whole camp would have been restarted. I feel like, in a weird way, I can see this happening. <laughs> don't, don't get me, just for the simple fact that he's known. I mean, obviously, it's not very credible. We saw what happened with Tyson Fury. He was essentially holding him up in times during that fight. He's lost a lot of fights, essentially. He's obviously, to my mind, and I think we've said it many times before, should be retiring. I think there's, like, there's effects of, of being punched too many times already showing on to draw. But frankly, from an actual marketing perspective, not the worst shout at all. Um, would I expect AJ to finish him? Yes. But and again, you could also get, you could basically sit there and go, there's, there's minimal risk. He comes in, absolutely irons out Chisora in about two rounds, three rounds, starts claiming he's finished him quicker than Tyson Fury. The train rolls out the station. That's kind of how I actually see it probably going. Yeah, um, yeah Chisora for me is a front runner. The one I'd like to see, I don't know if we're going to have time to discuss this, but what I would really, really like to see, and who we've seen obviously tweeted about today, Billy Nelson, friend of the show, friend of ESBR, is obviously for Martin Bacoli to uh, to fight him. And I would actually love to see that. I think that'd be a hell of a fight. And I would actually edge towards Bacoli, so it won't happen. But that's the one for me that I would really, really like to see. But I think of the names you mentioned to me here, Water seems <laughs> seems more likely than it should do. Yeah, it's when I first heard that as a possibility, I just thought that's absolutely ridiculous. But as the hours have gone on, I just start start to think more and more people would have taken the idea seriously, and I wouldn't rule it out. Um, but we'll see. Look, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Final question for me to you, Elliot. Um, you touched on Martin Bacoli there. How confident would you be that Martin Bicoli beats Joshua on a week's notice? How does it happen? You know what? Before Bicoli went to France and beat Tony Yoka, it was I would have been leaning towards Joshua. But that version would beat Yoka to me. And the version we've seen of Joshua against Franklin, I don't get me wrong, the Usyk losses are fine. I thought it was good in the second loss. 
But a lot of the um, statements is coming out about a lot of the blame game is coming out about mentally seems a bit a bit distant from boxing and almost like he's kind of finished, almost like the road is is coming to an end for me. I actually think Bacoli would beat him. I think I could I can I could see him stopping him. I really could see him stopping him. The size of Bacoli as well. Yeah. Um, I think he would have to probably stop him. Like you said, I don't think he's working behind the jab at the O2 with the money that AJ has got behind him is necessarily going to be the one. But I actually think uh, the size of the man and the power he's got, I can actually see him beating him and stopping him probably somewhere between somewhere between eight and ten. We shall see. Elliot Grigg, thank you for your time. And we will see um, who Anthony Joshua faces on August the 12th, if anyone. Thanks again. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, guys, for watching.